Okay, these are three papers. We now have five in the literature on this uh, topic. One just came out a week ago. Turns out, you know what sugar makes in your liver? Earwax, ceramides. And ceramides are famous for being inflammatory. All right, and sugar generates ceramides in your liver. So here, what we did in this study was we took 43 children from our obesity clinic at UCSF, ages nine to 19, Latino and African-American, all low socioeconomic status, all processed food and high sugar consumers. And what we did was we figured out what they were eating on their home diet. We studied them on their home diet. And then we catered their meals for the next nine days. We supplied their food. We supplied it to give them the same amount of protein, the same amount of, carb, uh, of uh, uh, fat, the same amount of carbohydrate, the same amount of fiber. The only difference was we took the sugar out and we put starch in to replace it. We kept their weight constant over the course of the nine days. Okay, and here's what happened. We gave them a scale to make sure that they didn't lose weight. And you'll notice the change in subcutaneous fat, no change because they didn't lose weight. The change in visceral fat, the belly fat, down 7%. But look at the change in liver fat, down 22%. And take a look at their glucose uh, curve before and then after the change. An improvement, basically, more glucose tolerant. And here are the insulin levels. Here's insulin resistance because the insulin is not coming down. And here's, even though we're giving them more glucose, because you know we took the sugar out and put starch in, that's more glucose, they are now insulin sensitive. And the reason is because now their liver works better. So a cart in cartoon form, here's what was happening at baseline, okay? They had fatty liver and they were making serum triglyceride, VLDL, and after nine days of sugar restriction and starch uh, supplementation instead, their liver fat went down 22%. Their turning sugar into fat went down 46%. Their triglyceride went down 49%. Their visceral fat, belly fat went down 7%. And their pancreases started making insulin properly because the liver fat went away. In other words, we reverse their metabolic syndrome with no change in calories and no change in weight. Again, proving a calorie is not a calorie because if it comes as sugar, it's way worse than the calories. But there's something else that also is a problem with processed food, aside from sugar, the lack of fiber. Turns out the quality of the carbohydrate, whether it comes with fiber, has a major effect. So here you can see blood glucose levels in type two diabetics on a standard diet and on a low carb diet. This is one of the reasons why people advocate low carb diets is because they don't generate an insulin response and they can actually lower blood glucose because you're not giving the glucose by mouth. That's true. But take a look here, same graph I showed you before, but now with another study where they gave a high fiber diet. Okay, they didn't take the starch out. Whoops, sorry. They didn't take the starch out. All they did was give that carbohydrate with fiber. And basically they got almost as low a glucose excursion because they got the insulin down by giving high fiber as by giving low carb. Okay? And it turns out the fiber is necessary because the fiber is the food for your microbiome. The fiber allows your bacteria to turn that microbiome into short chain fatty acids, acetate, propionate, butyrate. These are actually helpful to us, even though they're metabolic byproducts of the bacteria, they are anti-inflammatory, they are anti-heart uh, disease, and they are anti-Alzheimer's. You need the fiber in order to feed your gut. And you can see fiber consumption here on the x-axis predicts a reduction in all-cause mortality, coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and colorectal cancer. More fiber, more better. But 
Processed food is fiberless food because you can't freeze fiber. Ultimately, the goal is get the insulin down. And anything that makes the glucose go up or anything that makes the liver store fat is going to make the insulin go up. Refined carbohydrate, sugar. Refined carbohydrate, sugar. These are the bad guys in the story, but these were not the target of the last 50 years. This paper looks at the problem a different way. This is done by my colleague, Jim Johnson at UBC, and he did a brilliant uh, thing. What he did was he developed a transgenic mouse that had only half the insulin, only half the insulin, only made half the insulin. Now you would say, well, half the insulin, that animal should become diabetic. No, not true. In fact, not only did these animals not become diabetic, they also didn't become obese, and they also ended up um, living much longer. They had lifespan extension because insulin is the bad guy in the story. And anything you can do to get the insulin down will actually increase your, um, your lifespan. Insulin is the problem. And getting the insulin down is the solution. And you can do it with diet. So myth number two, debunked. It is not about calories. It never was. Rather, it's about insulin. Get the insulin down any way you can. And that's what we did at UCSF in my clinic for 15 years. We were not an obesity clinic. We were an insulin reduction clinic. And we had to figure out in every case, what was the reason for the patient's high insulin? And then attack that. And then the patient got better. And not everybody had the same reason for their high insulin. Okay, so you needed some, you know, shall we say medical expertise, but insulin reduction is the goal. That's the primary therapeutic goal. Get the insulin down by resolving the insulin resistance and reducing the insulin release. And the way to do it, reduce sugar and refined carbohydrate because that's what makes insulin go up, increase soluble and insoluble fiber because that's what keeps insulin down. Well, you need a low sugar, high fiber diet. That's called real food. Problem is, that's not what the food industry is selling. They're selling a high sugar, low fiber diet. That's called processed food.